Hi everyone, this is Gleb Bakhmutov. Recently, a user asked me on Gitter, what's wrong with this piece of code? Not only it's red, it also doesn't work as the user would expect. For example, the user gets the org ID after waiting for network intercept and processing the response. But when he tries to print it using console log, he gets something that really is not the ID. So let me answer and fix the problems in this particular code and then rewrite it in a much clearer way showing the power of Cypress Fluent interface. I recreated a similar code and a similar situation where before each test I visit the to do MVC. I reset it so that it has uh, no to do's and then I intercept the post when the new item is added and I do add the item using the UI. Then I wait for the post to do intercept that was defined right above. And then I work with the intercept object, like verifying that the status code is 201. And then we send the right title, the completed equals false. And I return the ID of item posted by the application. Now I'm trying to print it right here because I assume that whatever I assigned right here is what will be printed. So here's my Cypress test, let me rerun it again and it passes, but it doesn't print what I expect it to print. So I expected an ID, but instead it prints some kind of Cypress object, a chainer with a dollar sign in front. So what is going on here? Well, Cypress commands, right? They don't actually wait immediately because it's all queued up for execution, right? Just like promises, when you queued a callback using that then, it not necessarily runs right away, right? It will run after the previous command finishes. So every time you run a Cypress command method, it actually returns an instance of Cypress so you can chain more and more callbacks, right? And chain more and more commands and assertions. So what you get here is not the organization ID. It's not the return value of the last call. It's just an instance of Cypress chainer, you know, internal API. So you cannot assign it like this, right? And that means you cannot print it like that, right? In fact, the order of execution here goes like this. First, the method wait executes and it queues up wait command. Then, the then command executes and it queues up this callback to run after the wait command finishes. So right now we just added two commands to the queue and then immediately try to print the org ID. Well, org ID, even if we had this variable somewhere here, would still be undefined because nothing here executed yet. We only executed wait and then queued it up and immediately try to print something that will be set in the future. So anytime you try to use a value from the application, from the network call, just put it in the callback. So right here, you will get the ID because that's the result returned by the previous callback. And here you can print it. Let's see what it prints now and notice the right to do ID, a random ID generator it will be printed. I suggest a little better approach instead of printing it to the DevTools console, print it to the command log inside Cypress so you can see it in a video or screenshot. So now we fixed the problem with printing and getting the ID. Now let's improve this code a little bit. And I hope that you will see the power of Cypress when we rewrite this code a little bit. First, notice that we are verifying something from the intercept object, right? Like right here. We don't care about anything else. We just care about the uh, response property. Now, if we look at the actual wait command, and if we click on that, it yields the whole intercept object that has the request property and the response. If we're not interested in the whole object, we can say, okay, get the intercept and get its response property. It's a built-in command, right? Um, and it will get the previous value and it will wait for it to have a property called response. And then the response will be passed here. Okay, so now we don't longer need our interaction. Okay, now the cool thing, we can still click on this command to see what it yields, right, and the original object, okay, so we can still debug this easily. Now, right here, we first validating the status code and then a couple of properties inside the body of a response. So one thing is that 
where assertions don't print any kind of descriptions. So I don't know what this 201 is. I can guess it's status code. So why don't we add status code message? You can add it to every assertion and it makes the assertions a lot clearer of what kind of values we're asserting, right? Completed title status code. Now, right here, why don't we take this response and we'll say, okay, right here, response status code should be 201, right? So we will validate the status code separately from the rest of the body. Now you might ask why? Well, in this case, we can, for example, improve the assertion itself. We can say expect response to have property status code equal to 201. And in that case, we don't even need the message because the assertion itself will be very nicely shown in the command log. Now, here's something else. We never change or return anything or never run any other Cypress command inside the dot then callback, which means Cypress will keep the original subject. So it was response and it will be response in the next dot then callback. This is Cypress convention of its then command. So if we're working with response and we're only interested in the body, let's again use its command and we'll say, just get me the body, okay? And now we are working with the body of the response. So very nice kind of chaining of get me the intercept, get this response, verify the status code, keep working response, gets the body property, verify. Now in this case, we're verifying just a few properties that we know, the actual body has an ID, as you know, right? So in this case, we know only title and complete property. So we only verify some of the properties inside this object. There is a very nice assertion for this. We can say should deep include. So not deep equals, but deep include. And then we can say title and complete it. And we remove individual assertions right here. Expect uh, to deep include. Okay. Okay, so if we're verifying using the body and then just returning a property, let's split it up. We can use the should assertion, right? That's part of a chain, deep include, and then let's give the title and complete it, right? And in this case, we don't need to actually write explicit assertion. Okay, the power of fluent interface. Get the body, run an assertion. If it passes, it will be yielded to the next command or next assertion. Well, again, we're getting just a property, so let's use its ID and then we'll log it. In fact, why we couldn't use a should assertion like this one right here? Because you could say should have property status code equal to 201. Now, in this case, it would not work because most of assertions in Cypress keep the original subject right? They actually, you know, assert something and continue with original subject. But there are a few exceptions and have property assertion is one of those exceptions. It changes. So it works with response object in this case, but it yields to the next command, the actual property after validating it. Because we don't need to change from the response to just the status code. That's why we have to use that then and confirm uh, using an expect assertion, keeping the original response. But in this case, we can actually change this and say should have property ID. And we don't know the value, so we'll just yield it with a side log. Okay. Now, we do know a few things about the ID. We know uh, that it uh, should be a string, for example. Right. And look at that. We now don't even need that then because the assertions itself will print it to the command log. Now, there is one other thing that you can kind of improve in this code. Already it's very concise, it's very debuggable. I can print each object, right? Uh, if something fails, right? That let's say if I misspell title as titles, right? We immediately, uh, let's say title, no, something. We immediately know what was wrong, right? What's correct. There is one improvement that I can suggest, and this has to do with writing complex assertions. So I have a little helper called SizePack that I already installed here. So I import it from SizePack, and now we can say, okay, the response should, and then Spark, and then you just describe the object. So status code should be 201. 
and then the body so you can describe the nested object inside the response it should have title it should have completed equal to completed and it should have id and we don't know you know what the value is but we know it's a string so you can use predicates and built-in predicates from SizePack, and we can remove all this okay and now we can say it's id right actually we don't need this check this out this validates the whole response the status code equal to 201 it has a body and inside the body there is a title new to do completed false and it actually prints the id and if you want to get the id okay go ahead and get its id so that you can use it in the next output because now we were dealing with original response we'll say body.id its command allows you to use deep nested properties Okay, so this is my advice on how to write powerful, short, and very explicit, and yet very clear and easy to debug chains of commands and assertions in Cypress. So check out the blog I linked in the description of this video. Hit me up with any questions, and happy testing.